Well, you are listening to Meeting House here on Faith Radio, and we are, as we might say, backstage after the Atlanta red carpet event for the new movie from the Kendrick Brothers called War Room, opening up on August the 28th, and we have one of the Kendrick Brothers sitting yes. beside me, Stephen Kendrick. And Stephen, it just has to make your, your heart very gratified to see the, I don't know how many people out were in the house tonight, About but there are quite a few people. Yes. So uh, tell me what it was like to, uh, to see that kind of affirmation among the, the people, many of whom you, you know from, right. uh, from your time in Georgia. Well, we're so honored. Uh, the about a thousand people that showed up for the Atlanta premiere of War Room and the standing ovation at the end, the excitement. When I think about, though, the potential of if those people take back the message of this film and begin to pray and they begin to call their, their families and their churches to pray and how it could impact our, our local cities and uh, what God might do. You know, it's exciting. There's some very influential people that were in the room, not only in the Atlanta area, but many flew in from out of town that I know about that are connected to the National Day of Prayer, Awakening America Alliance, Cry Out America. Uh, there's uh, groups, Moms in Prayer for schools, hundreds of thousands of students that they're trying to train and moms to pray for their campuses in the public schools. And so when I think about uh, how they can be blessed and encouraged by War Room, and uh, it, it's very encouraging. I love the responses tonight. There was a lot of laughter in the room, you know, and, uh, and then the response at the end with the interviews. I'm very grateful to the Lord. He's the one that has brought all this together, and he's the one that we're looking to now to hopefully use this film to, to impact our nation in, in a great way. And just a little aside, what is just really amazing, the two of you, you and Alex, are so gifted as storytellers, but you have the ability to use laughter, and you can use laughter, and then you can turn right around and really stir the emotions, stir the heart with some spiritual truth. You have an incredible ability to do that. How have you, how have you developed that? Well, we, we pray a lot as we're going into the movie. We're looking for those heart moments to communicate God's goodness, God's faithfulness. If you think about those moments when you're tearing up, it's usually when God shows up and, and something does changes in a person's heart and he's drawing a person into a relationship with him or they're surrendering to him or a prayer is being answered. And so at the same time, we love humor. And so we laugh a lot when we're together. I like seeing movies where you're laughing a lot. So. Uh, it's encouraging. This movie is a primarily African-American cast, and they bring so much wit and humor and passion and faith uh, to this story. It just couldn't have been made any other way, you know. But they're universal themes that anyone can relate to. And so um, it, we're excited, very grateful for, for the finished product of War Room, all the people that poured into it, all the people that prayed for it, and uh, seeing hopefully now what God's going to do through it uh, when it hits the ears on August 28th. Well, you... You mentioned a number of influential prayer leaders and the desire that you have on your heart to see God use this film in a, in a movement of prayer. And you were saying some really powerful things in Symphony Hall tonight to that end. This is about developing a prayer strategy for one individually, for a, a person and his or her family. And this just continues to grow and it, can, and it has the potential to touch lives in our churches and our communities and across the nation and in the, the very short period of time we have remaining, I wanted you to just comment a bit more about the strategy, the strategy that you see that taking the principles of yes. this film can actually have on potentially transforming a nation. Well, when we look back at where America was before the Great Awakenings, we were in a bad place. People were abandoning the church. Uh, Christians were being mocked. Uh, there was persecution that was increasing. And this is in America in the 1700s. But believers united in extraordinary prayer. And they prayed for years that God would show up in power. And he did. And hundreds of thousands of people were saved. Uh, the colleges were transformed. The, the, the political leaders, you know, shifted in leadership uh, towards the Lord, things that would honor the Lord. And it made a huge impact on the direction of our nation. That's happened in Scripture. Nehemiah, you know, helped bring revival through prayer and through obedience. And Esther was a catalyst of completely inverting the political uh, direction of the nation. And it was through fasting and prayer and obedience and courage. And so we believe that right now believers need to be stepping up in, in courage and in wisdom in our culture. But first, they need to be praying. Uh, Jesus spent all night in prayer before he chose his 12 disciples. And he, the Son of God, if he chose to seek the, the Father that much before he made major decisions, how much more so should we? 
because uh, we need God's wisdom for every every day, every decision that we make. And so we believe that if churches will devote themselves to prayer, if you read the book of Acts, they were devoted to prayer and the Holy Spirit came in Acts 2. And then they redevoted themselves to prayer as the new church that was growing. And then every time that they were tempted to, to get off it on tangents, they would recommit themselves to prayer again. In Romans it says, be devoted to prayer, Romans 12. Colossians 4, it says, devote yourselves to prayer. And so when Jesus threw the money changers out of the temple, he didn't say my house should be called a house of preaching or programs or you know promotions. You know He said it should be for prayer. That is the first priority. Because if we will prioritize prayer in our church, the preaching will get a whole lot better. The evangelism will get a whole lot better. The worship will get a whole lot better because God's spirit will show up in power. And so we believe right now we're at a, a crossroads in our church, in, our, in the church and in our nation. And we need to be repenting and seeking the Lord in humility and in obedience and unity. And if we do, I think God is going to show up and bring some incredible things in our nation. How can people pray between now and August 28th with respect to the release of War Room? They can pray uh, about using the film to call their church to prayer. They can pray about their own personal prayer lives and ask the Lord uh, what he wants to do there. Uh, our flesh is in opposition to the things of the Spirit of God, Galatians 5 says. And so uh, it can be hard to get on your knees. You know, um, Your flesh is, it wants to say, hey, go do something else, or this is a waste of time, or you're not good at this. You know, or aren't you uncomfortable now? Or don't you have things you need to be doing? And so um, we have to be humbling ourselves before the Lord. We're praying in faith and seeking his face and so but i believe that if churches will and we are we already see it in our church and other churches when we prioritize prayer it completely uh, renovates the a church prayer is the wind in the sails of every ministry of every church and when we ramp up our praying everything starts moving forward in a positive way stephen kendrick director, producer of the film War Room, uh, wearing a number of different hats of the Kendrick Brothers. Thank you so much, warroommovie.com. Thank you so much, God bless.